gamers all around the world. Today, we're doing a Civ tier list for season three. I do want to emphasize something. This is my opinion. So if you are in gold and you're like, I disagree with this, this Civ is OP. Okay. Uh, so this is based on my opinion, playing at a high level. Uh, some civs are easier, some civs are harder, so the results may vary depending what league you're in. I did not look at civ win rates on the ladder because I think that's very skewed. As well as this civ tier list, I guess, depending which point of view you're looking at. So I am doing this civ tier list assuming there are, let's say, 10 maps and like 2 are water maps, 2 are like dry Arabia like maps, 2 are campy maps, 2 are like hybrid maps. You get it. So it's like a assuming assuming you know a, a well-balanced map pool because uh i also think we're probably going to have you know different uh, uh maps at some points different maps in tournaments and so on and so forth so it's it's kind of complicated to create a civ tier list for every single map pool out there because there's going to be different tournaments ladder custom games quick matches and so on and so forth so with that in mind we're going to start with not a surprising one in my opinion probably for a lot of people and i said i'm not basing this off ladder win rates but i do know that this has the worst win rate by far uh and that is malians so the worst sieve right now is for sure malians um so some of you may say well malians haven't been out for very long so we don't know maybe they're better maybe they gotta get figured out and yada yada and so forth and you know you get it but one thing to keep in mind is the pro players have been playing malians for the past month they are a very unique sieve and you know it's possible that we're still yet to discover some things or figure out some stuff about the malians which might make them a little bit better but malians in the current state not only in my opinion but in every pro player opinion is the worst sieve uh, they lack a little bit of something, uh, they don't have armored units, and then them dealing versus armored units is quite rough. Uh, there's also a bug or unintended thing right now in the game, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Poison Arrow is supposed to stack uh, infinitely, like if you shoot with 50 archers, it, there's 50 Poison Arrows on the uh, unit, but I think it only stacks up to 8. So Poison Arrow does way less DPS or damage than it should. Um, I think one of the changes that I suggested to devs, maybe the castle landmark for Malians, you should be able to make night, uh, sofas out of it as a little power spike, power boost. But like I said, I do think they lack something. I don't know what that something is, but um, I would expect a little buff for Malians coming soon. Next sieve we will be talking about is holy roman empire and holy roman empire i think is quite a good sieve um there's been a lot of talk that hre is s tier i would say at red bull wall hre was probably an s tier sieve uh and the reason for that is we had a lot of water maps uh, a lot of maps that hre was quite good on but if i take in consideration that we're talking about like a uh, a balanced map pool, I would probably say A3 is A tier. It's really, really good, um, but not quite S tier because the S tier Civ that we do have is a lot better than the other Civs. Next Civ we're talking about is a Delhi. Uh, Delhi, still pretty good. Obviously, not too great on water maps, but still very, very strong on land maps, very strong on even hybrid maps. And yeah, I mean, Delhi, I feel like, has been unchanged for quite a while. Uh, some people like to use Tower of Victory these days, but in general, like, the standard Delhi is good. And Delhi, as well as the next Civ that I'm going to be talking about, are good or got better, sorry, in the new season for the same reason, as well as HRE, is because uh, Delhi and Mongol don't really go for fast 2 TC. And with the TC nerf in season three, where it takes longer to build and it costs more stone, uh, this made these sieves indirectly better. Um, so technically nothing changed for them, but 
they don't usually go for second TC, and because they don't usually go for second TC, the other sieves are worse against these two uh, because of that. So, Mongol's a bit better, Delhi's a bit better, and Mongol's kind of back. You know, there was a point where Mongol, I feel like, was complete trash, uh, but now it's kind of coming back, um, and against a lot of these, you know, top sieves, Mongol does okay. Um, Mongol's very good in hybrid maps, okay on water maps, not great on water maps, but on open maps, it's also really good. So, I feel like it has quite a few nice matchups, and if you like playing aggressive sieves, Mongol's the one for you. Um, and yeah, with the TC uh, costing more stone, the Mongol TC still is unchanged because it only costs wood. Um, the next sieve we'll be talking about is French. So French is not great on water, bad on hybrid maps, actually quite bad, probably one of the worst civ on hybrid maps. I'm talking like hybrid maps like uh, like Ancient Spires. Um, so where there's like water, but it's not like a full water committal. That's what I consider a hybrid map. French, I feel like struggles against A tier civs. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad civ, I would say. It just... I feel like you have to play quite quite a bit better than people in the same rank playing like Delhi or, or Achery or Mongo uh, in order to beat them. So it doesn't mean it's a bad save, it doesn't mean it cannot win. Um, it saw a very high win rate at Red Bull Wallala, but only a very few players actually played it. So like only like three players played it uh, at Red Bull. It's not the greatest sieve in the late game. Uh, it's feudal is strong, but you know, French is one of the sieves that did go for second TC. Second TC uh, uh, builds did get a nerf, so it obviously um, affected French. Um, the next sieve I will be talking about is 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 Rus. Um, Rus has gone through quite a few changes, uh, and I'm gonna have to put it in B tier. Uh, last patch in season two, Rus was with Abbasid S tier. They were the best sieves by far. Rus was the best sieve by far. It wasn't even close. But I would say uh, right now they're probably B tier. Uh, Rus on land maps is extremely underwhelming. For those that are not aware, obviously the TC change uh, affects Rus quite heavily. Also, the golden gate before you could buy stone twice and you have enough for tc now you lack 50 stone when you do that so that's kind of awkward and one of the bigger changes that came in for ruse as well is sheep do not need or do not give bounty or gold anymore for ruse so it's a lot harder to collect bounty these days uh as ruse and we've also seen that the the, the because of this, the change in the meta regarding if you go one or two scouts, even as Rus or against Rus, Rus basically cannot reach 500 bounty in one-on-ones anymore. So it's fine to go, uh, if you're feeling confident, it's, it's okay to go one scout versus Rus because in order for them to get 500 bounty, they would need to kill two boars and like three deer packs and majority of the wolves in order to reach that. Because before, if you were getting an average of 12 13 sheep a match, sometimes maybe even more because you would run three scouts, you would be getting between like 60 and 80 bounty just from the sheep, and now you're missing that. So it's a lot harder to hit that 500 bounty mark. And if you don't have a chance of hitting that, then there's not much point in opening two scouts against Rus because they're not going to hit 500 anyway. So, uh, Rus on full water maps is quite good. Rus on hybrid maps, not so great. Rus on open maps, not so great. Obviously, another thing that affected Rus is Relics giving 80 gold uh, per minute. And, you know, Rus was a sieve that usually gets all the Relics or most Relics. And last but not least, uh, Rus Streltsy got nerfed as well. Um, Oh yeah, and they got, that's right, thank you chat. They also got their Palisade uh, walls build time doubled because they used to be, uh, they used to build walls at the same speed as uh, normal walls, but Rus walls have 100% more health. So now what devs did is they made their walls basically take twice as long to build than normal walls to kind of accompany that, which makes sense, but it's just, it's just plenty of nerfs basically. Plenty of nerfs. Oh, it's, it's from three to seven seconds. Yeah, there you go. 
So, yeah, a lot of nerfs. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that Roost is terrible to play. It just means that before it was broken and now it was now it's maybe uh, uh, you know a little underwhelming. But that's about it. <clears throat> the next sieve we will be talking about is Abbasid. Um, Abbasid is, is a little bit of a weird one and I'm not quite sure, like maybe there should be another tier, but I, I feel, I feel actually fine putting Abbasid here. Uh, Abbasid, just like Cruz, used to be an S tier sieve, uh, obviously TC taking longer to build and costing more attack than Abbasid a lot because they go for usually double TC for a total of three TCs in Feudal, so that, uh, you know, clearly did not help them. But overall, Abbasid just, uh, you know, that TC change alone uh, did nerf Abbasid quite a bit, and you can definitely feel it when you're playing the games. Uh, doesn't mean that it's unplayable, it's obviously still a very, very good sieve. Uh, it's just not OP as hell as it used to be. Uh, next sieve we will be talking about is English. So, English for me was between B and A tier. Probably, if I had to put it on the current ladder map pool, let me actually see what it is. If I had to put it on the current ladder map pool, I would probably put it in B tier. Probably. But, if we're assuming a more balanced map pool, um, English is very strong on water maps because their ships get plus one range when you upgrade them, and their ships cost che are cheaper. On hybrid maps, they can go men at arms or even villager pools to prevent enemy docks. On open maps, they're okay. On camping maps, they're great. Yeah, uh, English can also put a lot of pressure uh, on other civs, especially on the civs that rely on going second TC. They can be in your base and prevent you from making a TC on a deer pack and then making the game kind of awkward for you. Overall, I think English uh, improved quite a bit and it was a quite popular pick. Uh, at the uh, Red Bull wall along. But I, I think that Abbasid and English could potentially be uh, a tier under. Maybe not Abbasid, maybe English. Like it could be if there was another tier between A or B, maybe I did, the, uh, did need five uh, tiers. Um, would be there, but I think B, A tier, depending on, I think, maybe who you ask. The next sieve that we're gonna be discussing is the new sieve. Uh, and when new sieves came out, I rated Malian, I think, A tier and Ottoman like B or C tier, D tier, I don't know which one exactly. And I said something, and that is that Malians will probably become weaker and weaker over time because the units are new and people gotta figure them out a little bit how to counter them. On the other side, Ottomans are more uh straightforward regarding with their units but the way you get to getting those units is a little bit different because you have military schools and my suspicion was that ottoman will get a lot better in time once people figure out the ottoman timings and figure out how to play them how to use sipahi effectively uh, how to use mechters effectively and janissaries and that's what happened and ottoman is a really really good sieve and it's going into the a tier uh, it's quite a strong sieve. It kind of replaced um, what Rus was last season, where you go full one base aggression. Ottoman can do that really well with Mechter, with movement speed, uh, Vizier pointing, and then you just mass archers, some Sipahi, some Spearmen, and you have really, really, really strong pushes. So I think uh, Ottomans are a really good sieve. They can also overwhelm quite a lot of sieves in Feudal and Castle just because they get free units. Uh, Ottoman and Imperial, not too impressive. The Great Bombard is not that great. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, because uh, Culverins beat it pretty, pretty badly. But overall, I think Ottoman is a really, really strong sieve. And I think as people get better and better, it might become even stronger. And last but not least, we have our winner. The best sieve by far, in my opinion. And opinion of pretty much every single uh, pro player at Red Bull Wola is that China is number one sieve and it's not even close and that's why I had I could not put HRE next to China it's not comparable China had the highest win rate at Red Bull Wola it was most banned sieve if I'm not mistaken 
when it was available for pick, it was always picked first. Uh, it is the strongest sim on water. It is extremely strong on hybrid maps. It is very strong on open maps. It is broken on camp maps. It doesn't have bad matchups. Like, there's n no Civ from these Civs that I'm like, oh man, I'm playing China versus this, that's gonna be rough for me. All the matchups that China has are really good. As long as China doesn't take damage and progresses from Feudal to Castle and onwards, it's just extremely strong. China Imperial is, is batshit insane. China Castle is really, really good with Nest of Bees and Palace Guards. And the difference between this China and the old China and the old patch is that China can fight extremely well in Feudal now because, um, you know, with the TC nerf, for example, it doesn't affect China too much that they need 50 extra stone because you got Imperial officials and the build time doesn't affect them as much either because their buildings build faster. So they kind of remain the boom sieve while other sieves got slowed down quite a bit. You also unlock your Song Dynasty really early, so your villager production already starts rolling. So it's kind of like, it used to be the best Boom Civ, but I feel like now it's even better uh, than it used to be. Also, their unique units are great, so... China number one. There it is. Again, I will say this. Uh, this Civ tier list is for Season 3. The Season 3 has just started. And mind you, I am this is like the fastest Civ tier list that I've made into, into the new season. I usually like to wait a week or two and then give my opinion because I don't want to give scuffed or crap tier lists uh, just to get a couple of extra views. But have in mind that I have been playing on uh, Pop, see I said it correctly. Uh, for about three weeks preparing for the Red Bull Wallow Tournament and then I've played a full week at Red Bull Wallow Tournament in this balance patch and with these sieves so I feel like I have pretty good grasp of the sieves and, and I think this is pretty much where I would kind of put the balance right now. Overall, I think the game is really really good uh, uh, or well balanced at this moment. I think obviously Malians are a bit too weak, China is a bit too strong, but other than that, like I said, I, I could see English drop down here, and then overall you have a, a pretty, pretty uh, balanced game, and I don't think there's, um, like I said, except China, I don't think there's any matchup where you enter, you're like, well, that's it, you know, they got this, and I got this, and, and you lose, right? Um, I think it all depends on the gameplay, the games have been become more aggressive, and people are uh, much more open to like attacking early on and putting on the pressure uh, on your opponents. If something changes, if we have a balance uh, patch or if we have some kind of map pool change or something, I will try to update you guys with another Civ tier list. Maybe I'll do Civ tier list for December actually because it's uh, November right now, very early November. So if some things change, I'll do another Civ tier list for December. And just do one Civ tier list monthly, which is kind of what I've been doing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. The guides for every Civ are coming. And I'll probably be starting with Ottomans and Malians since they're, they're the newest ones. And then go to the other Civs as well. And I'm also going to do two videos. Everything you need to know about um uh, 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 Malians and Ottomans if I haven't done them already. I can't remember if I did or not. Uh, but that's it. I don't think I did. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.